Hi everyone, let us discuss this result. Okay, so in a matrix space XV, if you have a convergent sequence, then it has a unique limit. This thing we have to prove. Okay, so see, uh, I have considered one sequence Xn, which is convergent in a matrix space XD. To prove that it has a unique limit. To prove that Xn has unique limit. Okay, so that means it converges to a single point. So this thing we have to prove. So in, in, in mathematics, when we want to prove something, normally we assume exactly opposite to that. And we go further. We write some logical sentences. And at the end, we get contradiction somewhere. And then we say, we get a contradiction because of our wrong assumption. Therefore, our assumption is wrong and hence the result. So in, this is a method we have. Okay, so I'm going to follow the same method here. What we have to prove, we have to prove it has a unique limit. I will assume that it has no unique limit. That means it converges to two distinct points. Let me show it here what I want to say. See, this is a matrix space XD. Okay, so I'm showing it here. This is a matrix space XD we have. We have some sequence X1, X2, right? So this is a sequence we have X3 x4 and this sequence is convergent and converges to some point. So I'm assuming it converges to two distinct points. Getting it converges to x as well as it converges to y. This thing I'm assuming. So let it possible, let if possible, xn converges to x and xn converges to y or so where x is not equal to y okay so we are resuming this thing let it possible this sequence xn converges to x as well as converges to y where x and y are distinct points okay so that's why x is not equal to y but when you have two distinct points definitely you can find some non-zero distance between them so therefore distance between x and y is greater than zero in this diagram also you can easily see there is x and y okay so therefore there is some non-zero distance let me show it here so this is a distance we have i'm calling it as epsilon so let epsilon is equal to d of x y which is greater than zero right so let us use the given information what we have we have a first information action converges to x so let us uh, use it now we have xn converges to x so i hope you remember the definition of convergent sequence definition of convergent sequence says for given epsilon there exists and belongs to set of natural number such that d of xn comma x is less than epsilon so i'm going to write the same so therefore for given instead of for given i will say for above since epsilon already we have for above epsilon greater than zero there exists n belongs to set of natural number such that such that d of xn comma x less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to capital n. getting so by definition we can write this so we can do some adjustment instead of epsilon we can take epsilon by 2 since epsilon is also very positive very small positive real number and epsilon by 2 is also obviously very small positive real number so that's why we can write this thing i'm calling it as one okay so see let us go further okay let us go further see uh, we use the first information that is xn converges to x similarly we have the second information also that is xn converges to y so let us use the second information we have let me write what we have xn converges to y so in the same way we can fo follow the definition and what can we write so therefore for above epsilon greater than zero there exist n belongs to set of natural number see in already we have taken right so we will have some another it can be another natural number so i will call it as n1 right and i will call it as n2 such that such that d of xn comma y less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to n2 i am calling it as 2 so there also i am going to do that adjustment that is instead of epsilon i will write epsilon by 2 okay so now we have this very important statements 1 and 2 
but the problem is that one is true for n greater than or equal to n1 and the two is true for n greater than or equal to n2 so actually we have to use both inequalities this one as well as that one so we should uh, have some common n okay for which both will hold okay see that's why i will take let n is equal to maximum of n1 and n2 then definitely both both inequalities will be true for this n let me tell you why suppose our first n1 is 5 okay so this inequality is true for all uh, points of that sequence which are greater than 5 that means can be it, it is true for s x6 x7 x8 and so on and second inequality is true for 7 that means n2 will be 7 that means if you select x8 x9 x10 then it will be true then what we do the first one is true for 5 greater than 5 second one is true for greater than 7 so if you take maximum of both that means 7 so it is true for all n greater than or equal to 7 both inequalities so that's why i'm selecting n is equal to maximum of n1 and n2 so let me mention then 1 and true 1 and 2 will be true will be true for n greater than or equal to capital n okay so see there is no more space to write make a screenshot of it then we will go further so i removed that diagram okay so we are having some more space to write see uh, now i consider what i do i consider epsilon what is value of our epsilon epsilon is equal to d of x y so this is d of x y do you remember triangle inequality which we have already studied in a definition of metric right so triangle inequality says this is less than or equal to d of x comma x n plus d of x n comma y i introduce one point x n so that's why by triangle inequality we can write this one d of x comma x n is same as d of x n comma x by symmetry but see we have d of x n comma x is less than epsilon by 2 so let me mention here this is less than epsilon by 2 similarly d of x n comma y that is also less than epsilon by 2 and uh, i will mention here this is true for all n greater than or equal to capital n so now 1 and 2 are true for this n right epsilon by 2 plus epsilon by 2 what will we have epsilon we started with epsilon here we got this inequality and finally we got epsilon again so what we get epsilon less than epsilon is it possible no definitely so we get a contradiction here big contradiction we get why we are getting contradiction because our assumption is wrong so we have already assumed that convergent sequence converges to two distinct points that is definitely wrong so that's why we are getting contradiction our assumption is wrong then what is true then uh, true should be that convergent sequence has a unique limit point okay so let me mention all these things here so I have written a conclusion here. So we get a contradiction because our assumption is wrong. Therefore, Xn must have unique limit and hence the result. So therefore, we can say every convergent sequence has a unique limit. Okay. So yeah, make a screenshot of it and we will stop. Thank you. Bye-bye.